experiencers of all kinds are opening new doorways, new pathways into the unknown. In many cases, they return from these inner journeys completely changed, and for some, they return with greater gifts of insight, expanded healing skills, and an inspiration that fuels their mission to share with others what they have learned. We learn that, yes, humanity is evolving, and at the same time, we see that we haven't even come close to the fulfillment of our original design and potential. People ask, how can I rediscover this? I'm not an experiencer. The only requirement would be a willingness to let go of all that we thought we knew from the past. This is the radical transformation of an experiencer. This was my entryway into a unique lifelong school of adapting to higher consciousness. It is a shamanic death or series of deaths that occurs. In computer terms, it defrags the files and wipes the hard drive of all the old, outdated, dysfunctional software, all the bugs and inconsistencies, and it reboots the consciousness it frees up the space for our source, creator, God, love to be reestablished into the equation of human life on earth. It was through my contact that it became clear. Humans have forgotten that their feeling feminine nature is actually their superpower. This gift is greatly devalued and greatly misunderstood in this world. It's time to give ourselves permission to fully be who we are. It takes courage, but I'm here to emphasize the importance of developing your inner courage now to meet yourselves and your maker within so we can find our way to the collective heart of humanity again. And as Gandhi said, be the change in this world. In my life and experience, I discovered that this is the telephone or conduit to higher consciousness, source, or the rest of ourselves. When love is restored in the equation of our consciousness, there's no question about our interconnectedness with all things. It is a felt vibrational experience versus a thinking experience. Belief is replaced by knowing. I no longer use my energy to convince the egoic mind of any of this, including my own. It was exhausting, trying to reduce the data that arrives within a vibratory field into sound bites for the thinking mind. I found that so much of my energy was in trying to prove something within the limits of thought and I understood that from this point of view, the conditioned mind, it would forever remain a paradox. The present moment felt experience of love changes everything and it transcends paradox. My inspiration is to encourage you to simply feel again, just as my visitors did for me. This is an important key for us, not only in the ongoing exploration of consciousness, but for the very future of humanity. You'll hear similar stories from those who have physically died and returned. They call these experiences NDEs, near-death experiences. Contactees or experiencers with Non-human intelligence will develop their own translations of these openings to more. Meditators or religious devotees also report the shifts in consciousness that seem to restore their eyes that see and ears that hear. It is an interior event. And I hear so many experiencers reference the challenges in processing the higher frequencies of energy. 
It is an initiation that resets our consciousness by facing our deepest fears and living through it. For some, it is a reset to our natural, balanced, feeling, thinking design again. A consciousness that includes the intellect, along with compassion, creativity, and layer upon layer of multidimensional understanding that wasn't there before. Those who have had these experiences are not special or different. Every body holds the key. And in the higher pantheism by Alfred Lord Tennyson, he said, closer is he than breathing and nearer than hands and feet. Everything is changing and it's changing quite rapidly. The frequency intelligence that contacted me repeatedly throughout my life showed me through feeling visions as a child, then in 1987 and numerous times since, that much of what we're witnessing in our world now would be happening at this timing. For instance, I had no context for the visions of everyone being confused about what was real and what was not real. Mental games and manipulation made people lose touch with reality. Many people were so confused that they made choices that were clearly not in their best interest. They did what they were told, literally acting out what they'd been programmed with. If we do not know thyself, or thy frequency, as I like to say, we are unaware of the vibrational difference between love and fear, inner and outer, head and heart, unaware of our direct connection to our power. Therefore, we are unbalanced and easily manipulated. Seeing these events unfold in our current outer world reality now, was important validation for me. Before this, most of what I was shown was filed away under, I sure hope this makes sense one day. The downloads in 1987, the, these, this was a series of um, contact experiences that um, were lucid dreams, um, out-of-body type experiences. And in this one major event, I... Uh, came back with uh, images and uh, memory, the feeling memory. It was quite vivid uh, visually and feeling-wise. Um, uh, an opening was created on the right side of my head and all of these tapes were inserted. And what I was experiencing was an actual physical feeling of data being downloaded into every cell of my body. It was like they were all lit up and... I saw many, many geometric figures, um, uh, same kind of experience of, you know, being shown these things in my 1991 um, major visitation uh, that I write about in my book. Anyway, there were um, lots of symbols and geometric figures, and it all had, at the time that it was happening, I had great understanding of what it meant. But then following that event, I started having a lot of anxiety about how am I ever going to remember this? This was like an amazing gift and experience, and how will I remember it? And later I was informed um, that it, it wasn't going to be a problem <laughs> and that it would surface when I needed it. Uh, and then they showed me in, in that experience, they also showed me the cal uh, the calendar in, in decades. And um, it showed me, you know, 1990 as the next marker from 1987, and then the entire decade stretched out um, to <clears throat> 2000. And then it, they sh it pointed to it's beyond 2000. It wasn't right across 2000. It was a little ways ahead. And that's when everything was going to change and where all of this was going to make more sense. We've been so deeply immersed in the story 
and the characters on the screen that we've disconnected from ourselves and our planet and our source. We may be inspired by uplifting and informative media, but being focused only on what is offered out there, already framed for us, convenient narratives, is to essentially become a hunter-gatherer of known data, or just data that exists, in order to formulate and regurgitate opinions, rather than discovering and embodying our knowing wisdom. And this insanity is over, if we choose. We're learning what it's like to have lost ourselves in the theater, disconnected from our original selves and looping in a very small reality, an echo chamber, if you will. If I had to choose one basic theme that was pressed into me throughout my life of contact beyond the theater, it would be that everything we need to know and grow into balanced physical spiritual beings is right here within us. And it's available to lift us into higher octaves of reality. In the bigger picture view, we see that of what we refer to as life has mostly been a series of programmed frames and stories that have been provided to us. They keep us distracted, entertained, and or afraid. And many of us believe this reality to be all there is. We even police each other in following the rules and sticking to the script. Unless, of course, our movies get interrupted. For many people, these interruptions have occurred mostly through accident, illness, or loss. Events that have a way of bringing us into the moment and cracking open our hearts. But there are other ways that so-called normal lives get interrupted, and that is as an experiencer, one who is taken beyond what we were told. The contrast between the dense reality that we unconsciously adapted to and that which is more of our balanced natural state does take time to integrate. And some experiencers stay in a fear state feeling as if they were victimized, and this is understandable. I was there too for a time. But most will begin a journey of bridging the great divide between our everyday consciousness and the way that we interpret things from this fragmented view and the high-frequency expanded states that have disrupted the smaller view. Some of the ancient wisdom pointed to the cycle of time that we are living right now, whereby each individual heart will make a choice. Will we continue believing that we are powerless and disconnected from our source, the earth and the natural world? Or will we fully feel who we are, reclaim and reactivate our exquisite design? In other words, how do we reorient and reground into what's actual as we rediscover our our own bodies and ourselves sitting in that movie theater seat? How do we locate and express our own power and originality while the movie continues to play and most around us are still fully mesmerized by it? I found that locating our own resonance was key to understanding this important reintegration. I kept journals of my contact experiences for many years. And it was around 13 years ago that I was shown many things about the power of our emotional nature and that it is key to essentially coming back online with the universe. The method I was shown sounds pretty basic and simple when put into words. But with present moment attention to what we are feeling, we begin to unravel all that was suppressed, all of the wounding trauma and feelings that were not welcome in this world. What lies beneath all the pain and misunderstanding is pure resonance, whereby 
we become lucidly aware of our power to attune to the more. We also become aware of what we are no longer in accord with here. Thus the repeated messages to me that this is the choosing time that we're in right now. We are choosing with our vibration and we attune and lock into the reality or the song that we feel aligned with. If we cannot feel and stay locked into fear as an unconscious default, we will experience more of the same in this current reality. And from the visions I was shown, even further control and limitation as a strong probability. I've been sharing these emotional awareness tools with people. I notice that some have an unusual level of resistance to excavating emotional debris, the debris that impedes our full connection to all that is. The tools I was given are all about applied honesty and innocence, a, a return to what is real and actual in the moment. This is what shatters the spells that the, so many of us have been under in, in our deference to the theater. Some people I have worked with in, in applying this tool have told me outright that it's way too scary to apply honesty and truly feel what has been suppressed within. Mostly because they fear that the lives they have carefully crafted to work within this current system may drastically change. Jobs, relationships, status, identities, and it's true, it, it'll change. Though isn't it telling it seems we've invested a great deal of our energy in keeping up appearances, keeping things under control and fitting into the routine at all cost. This is the courage that is needed to want to become authentic and actually put our trust in love with a capital L rather than the system out there. And isn't this the very thing that the spiritual masters came here to teach and demonstrate. This is the timing on earth, an opportunity for truth and balance to be restored, firstly, within. The outer world perfectly reflects our own state of balance or imbalance with ourselves and the earth. If we carry within us our unconscious unhealed traumas from the past, we will unknowingly allow fear to fill in the blanks when things don't make sense here. When we resonate with fear, we project our disowned darkness, blame others, and continue to attract this disconnected, victim-oriented, violent way of life. It reinforces the belief that it's every man for himself and it's a game that we must fight to win. And this, by the way, is the current blockbuster movie in our collective theater right now, resonating with the perpetrator, victim, savior model, resonating with power struggles. Everything becomes an externalized fight to defend a wounded, fearful heart who has simply forgotten what love feels like. Fear doesn't always appear violent, though the gap or missing pieces in the world view of the quote good persona can manifest as distortions in organized religion and new age models that more than welcome the projection of the disowned light onto something we are endlessly reaching for but through believing in something external it never fully manifests because it it remains too far in the future or way back there in the past nonetheless too distant or too holy for the sinner to be blessed with right here, right now, in their own hearts. But if we have the courage to heal, whether it feels like a choice or it feels forced upon us, and we're actively releasing all that is blocking the doorway to our true essence, we begin to feel 
the love of the universe moving in our hearts and bodies, reigniting a beautiful love affair with our Creator. This is the awakening, the remembrance of love. It can feel messy and confusing in the beginning when we feel alone with it. And we're constantly being fed the old stories and scripts of the outer world. We find ourselves in a theater watching the same violent movie that we have long become disinterested in. We may still be in that theater, but we're not of it. This is the real work now, being in the world, but not of it. The stage of integration can be very challenging, but know that it doesn't last forever. It's a temporary stage in our collective awakening. Trust that you are not alone. There are many now who've experienced a transformational event, which are essentially memos from the soul, that it's time. They are front runners, spiritual warriors and healers that anchor here to support those who choose to heal, recover, and reorient to our feeling, knowing, operating system again. Our natural state that lifts us into a higher vibrational experience of life on and with the earth. All of what I share now is from the integration of these openings, these downloads I received over the years. At this point, I'm not as excited to talk about the past and how it all came to be. That's why I wrote the book, Koyopa Contact Within. So I could be on with sharing the outcome of these interactions, the practice of it. It's taken my whole life, and I am still integrating. I'm still owning it, and I'm still articulating it. But the main scoop is, if we want our world to be real, we need to be real. It starts here. And in these times, it's imperative that we be connected to our inner truth, our system and leaders, are being exposed, laid bare with all the ugliness of a collective festering wound. And they are not only trying to hang on to power, and it isn't just left and right, you know, blue and red. Uh, Make no mistake, there's a big fight going on now for control and power. And it's more than, uh, you know, we are offered through the media. Uh, So they're trying to hang on to power and they have a whole new vision for further control and limitation. Again, probabilities. Uh, Other experiencers have seen these um, visions, have had these visions as well. So what this means is we must locate our own power now or continue giving it away to those who are only too happy to take it. And for many experiencers, it's quite clear. An inner spiritual revolution is how we transform the chaos we find ourselves in. Things are not going to get better out there until we take responsibility and essentially self-direct our consciousness to rise above this vibrational containment that no longer resonates with who we are. I'm informed that there are far more awakening humans than we realize. And people ask sometimes, why aren't we told about it? Why don't I see this on the news? Again, don't wait for the news to tell you about this or anything in the outer world at this point. To, to inform you of these things. It's happening right now, everywhere. We are waking up right where we are, embodying our original consciousness, looking each other in the eye again, loving each other, and making this happen ourselves. No one is coming out of the movie screen to save us, whether the hero is Jesus, aliens, Captain America or Wonder Woman, the Hopi knew. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Or these things in greater shall ye do. The hero arrives within. 
this is personal for me. There is, it isn't just another objective study in the mechanics of consciousness. It's subjective, which initiates the dreaded eye-rolling judgments from our educational programming to easily invalidate it and shut it down. I call it actual and direct, and I'm still not clear why this has so little value in our sciences. This is what makes it all the more difficult for experiencers to speak out loud about it in our communities, which is something I want to change. For many, many years, I had very little reflection from another human who'd explored these landscapes in consciousness, like myself. I could not define what was happening to me in context of the known world. And was there an existing definition for me in the known world? I certainly read a lot at the time, and while I discovered glimpses of it in others' writings, I found no (coughs) pre-existing models or labels that I could conveniently attach myself to, you know, wash my hands of the confusion and just move on with life like everybody else. If these experiences had ever stopped, perhaps I could have reoriented to the smallness again or successfully cut off these parts of myself that clearly didn't fit here. But it didn't stop. And it was never fully about UFOs. It wasn't completely about ETs abducting me or giving birth to hybrid babies. It wasn't New Age or any religion at all. It wasn't even fully like the accounts of those who'd recorded Kundalini events. It was all of these things, but different. The more that occurred in this way, the more distant and invisible I felt from those around me. If I spoke about it, most people would freeze in fear. I lost friends and even family members that preferred to stick with the programming that clearly I was the crazy one. Today I just say thank God for the crazy going on out there in the world. It's pretty much what has fueled my courage to be sitting here with you right now. As the experiences continued, I was expanded further into these frequencies, which seemed to force more and more growth. At a certain point, there was no going back. I had to actively integrate more of me, alone in society and culture, yet feeling deeply connected and guided by this love and its infinite possibilities. Today, there are good people out there doing good work in these areas. But at the time, the given ways of explaining these events, explaining love beyond a romantic context, and how it was changing me were utterly inadequate. Later, I was guided within to stop trying to fit somewhere, anywhere. This I was informed was so that I could allow something original to occur. To own it. To be the author of my own life, the authority, without being reactionary to the shaming and judgment from others. I had to come to a place of acceptance of this inner gift that 95% of the people in my life said was wrong or bad. It didn't fit or match their programming. When I welcome the data of others now, it may resonate, validate, and enhance my own data, my own understanding. Or it may not resonate at all. But it does not uproot who I am and what I have connected with again. There is a beacon within me, and I know how to find it through this bioenergetic intuitive practice that connects me with the feeling resonance of love. This cosmic heart intelligence seemed to contact me to nurture and grow through the years and and give voice to these messages about humanity's evolution, about what lies beyond this strangely small reality. I never found my place here. There was nothing in the world Nothing in the world 
that I wanted to be as a profession. It's probably why I didn't finish college. And even following my initiation in 2002 on the sacred Mayan fire path into Call Guatemala, I chose not to take the title of Mayan priest or practice the counting of the days as so many had done over the centuries. We've already arrived at this very special crossroads in consciousness that the calendar pointed to. I value the Mayan te- <coughs> excuse me, I value the Mayan teachings very much. And I am thankful for all I learned from my teachers, but I knew myself and my soul as an artist, a mystic, and a truth teller. Again, I felt very guided to be original and not identify with routines from the past that might keep me looping within an old paradigm. I remained open. After my initiation fire, I climbed to the top of the temple of the jaguar, and I spoke as an equal with all of creation. I said, I am here. I'm ready. Just let me know how I can help. Three years later, when the messages began to arrive, it was also confusing to me. I had heard other channels and had never before heard anything like what I was bringing through. Plus, I felt frustrated because even though I tried very hard to capture this data into a, a perceivable form, I could never seem to fully transfer all of the packed layers of feeling data into something mental or linear. Later, I learned that this was by design. It wasn't speaking to the mind. It was bypassing it with the energy, offering an attunement. Well, the words were the bouncing ball, if you will, if, if it was needed, a place for the mind to focus on the lyrics of the song, so to speak. Originally, it would come to me announcing itself with a magnetic field. I knew when a visit was going to happen by these symptoms, my lips would tingle and my chest and the palms of my hands would warm and tingle too. My feet would get magnetically sucked into the earth. At times, I had a metallic taste in my mouth. If I had these sensations, it would happen 100% of the time. Many times it was simply messages that would stream into me, and somehow I just internally grokked or understood them. This was the same or similar energy as the visits and the conversations in my childhood. Following these events, I recall trying to write it out, but the more I wrote, the thicker the layers of data would come. So eventually I just gave up. It was impossible. It was too much data. Later, they taught me how to initiate a connection. Incidentally, it's the same practice I'm going to share with you in this group. When I'm in this zone, I'm in a cocoon of magnetic energy. I am held in a love so powerful that at times I have to cry out in ecstasy. I breathe differently, so deeply that I cannot recreate it outside of that dedicated connection. I speak foreign words and make unusual throat sounds that I also cannot recreate. And incidentally, when I hear these unusual sounds on a recording later, my body instantly responds to it and moves into accord with the higher frequencies of of this joy. I found this process, this emotional awareness process, the tools to be quite empowering and liberating. It was a way for me to activate and understand more deeply. It's all been well worth the journey. The Maya spoke of this serpent energy. They called it Quayopa. 
It is a core within that, when activated, connects us to the heart of heaven and the heart of earth. And we remember. By the way, the Maya never predicted an end of the world in 2012. It was the end of a major cycle, a grand phase in the cosmic wheel, a time which is, you know, has the potential for enormous destruction as well as massive transformation. The old world and the old ways began its fall on or near the December 21st, 2012 marker. Instead of continuing to adapt to smallness, we can choose to launch into the expansion of our greater identity. And the reintegration of the feminine is key. What I learned about the divine or sacred feminine is the, quote, return of it is when the heart is innocently engaged and in sync with the vibrational truth of who we are. These frequencies will naturally move us to blossom just like a rose with no thought, no hierarchy, no mechanical equations, no need to study for years to figure out. It just grows and blossoms with the love of the sun, the water, the soil, and the breeze. And it's your true and total identity. The balance that comes from the fusion of the natural world, the elements, and the whole brain, masculine and feminine aspects of ourselves. And this is where the oneness begins. Each of us making our lives one with our authentic heart, our unique passions, our place on the planet, and with our communities. When this mind-shattering energy meets matter, our very own physical bodies, everything shifts. And the doorway I was shown is in consciously inviting all of our feelings into our bodies, into present moment attention. When this immense love is awakened within our bodies, this is when we feel and know the truth that sets us free. In my experience, it seems that sound and resonance is the language of the cosmos, the earth and of our source. It's our language too. It feels in my body that I am fully connected with an infinite field of love. I am that love. And I relate to that love at the same time. It fills my body. It feels like light and sound at the same time. It's music. In the late 1980s and into the 90s, I was a singer. And I fronted a few rock top 40 and one original music band in Southern California. In the late 90s, I experienced a dark night of the soul, a very dark night of the soul that culminated in Coyopa. It's more commonly known as Kundalini. I like to use the Mayan term in my work, but whatever you want to call it, a doorway opened. And after three days of recovering, a flood of music came through. I had taught myself how to play the piano as a child, but had long forgotten how. I had to quickly relearn how to play so that I could capture it, everything that was coming. In hindsight, it's clear that music and poetry became my first sound translation of this massive love. The creative process helped me to reflect, to heal, to unravel and give voice to the changes that were happening to me. It also helped me to share it in a way that was more socially acceptable. I performed three albums of these original songs from bars to New Age churches all across the Western states. It didn't matter where I was, I loved it. But most people were unaware that for me, this music was about the rekindling of the greatest love affair ever. I want to be, I want to be all every need. I fought to be, now I got to be, really. 
healed Yeah, I wanna feel, I wanna heal your every need Just come to me When I look at you, I see what's true with these eyes I won't refuse, I'll wait for you, call me inside I can't come through till you undo the hidden lies I'm touching you, I'm touching you It was around 2004, 2005 when I began translating the messages in a different way. I can't tell you how it works, and some refer to this as channeling, but this is yet another category that I never felt I fully fit into. The connection occurred through awareness and the honest voicing of my not-so-pretty feelings and emotions until over time they dissipate. They no longer have a charge or they have no power. They leave. And eventually, I'm able to experience myself delivering an honest voicing of my feeling state of grace. That's in all honesty, speaking about the joy that I feel, speaking about the love that I feel, the power and it's true. It's not wanting to feel it. I'm embodying it. And then what this does when I feel synchronized or, or harmonized with it, it feels like a very large song that I'm connecting to. It was here that I could use thought or intention to either ask for, for what I needed at the time for more guidance or understanding, or it would just simply open me into an even greater, higher vibrational attunement of love. And this is what I share in our healing group called Soul Reboot um, in uh, Squim, Washington. In the broadcast of this love for accelerated healing and attunement, from the time I was informed that I could do this for others to, to radiate this energy, to the time I actually did it with a group was about 10 years. And that's how much I resisted it. I'm an introvert, after all. On the briggs Meyer scale, I'm an INFJ. It's not easy, you know, standing up in front of people. Even musically, it was very difficult. But I loved to sing so much that um, it kind of pushed me to, you know, put myself out there in front of people. The other way this energy was expressed was through the messages I recorded over the years, and they all speak to our evolving consciousness in this precise timing now and into the future. In April of 2009, this intelligence was informing me about this natural way of perceiving and how communion works, and I'll share a clip of this translation. It's hot and heart consciousness is spherical. Perception with the heart is an actual feeling in the human physicality of instant understanding through a filling in of the sphere. There may be color definition, there may be sound, there is the touch, that which is palpable to your skin, to your cells, to your bones, your blood. There is a rushing in, a filling in of understanding. And this occurs with not one single thought. There may be thought after the understanding. But know that thought comes in mostly as a way to translate from spherical to linear. 
what I was taught through these visitations was that if people really want to connect with other intelligence in our universe, multiverse, our best bet is to restore our feeling nature, which activates the conduit or the connection to self with a capital S, God, source, or all that is. Then we may resonate and even reside in these higher octaves of love. We have a tendency to look for all the signs or signals out there somewhere in space for intelligent life beyond Earth. Wake up the rest of your own intelligence, the heart, and you may be in a better position to make these direct connections. Love is the missing piece in almost everything that we were told here. Without this reactivation of the basics of our design, we will continue to loop in the madness of this echo chamber, trapped in this similar bandwidth of consciousness with only a fragment of our original design being utilized, which becomes a dangerous feedback loop of, this is all there is, so deal with it. Well, I know this isn't all there is. And many others have been shown this as well. Experienced it, felt it. I would enter these states and these kinds of messages would come through me. I have over 300 of them now filed away on hard drives. As I garner more courage, I bring them out of hiding. As I garner more courage, I bring myself out of hiding. My childhood memories include the usual stuff, riding my bicycle, puppies, bee stings, merciless teasing by my older brothers, etc. And then there were the numerous meetings with tall, bright, goldish-white beings. Later I called them angels because I heard my mother and others in my life talk about beautiful beings of light that loved us and cared for us that we don't always see But if we prayed hard enough in just the right way with the exact precise words, they would maybe help us out of difficult situations. Maybe. But I noticed that we could only speak of them in context of church and religion. It wasn't recommended that we speak of such things in our everyday lives. In my world, it all made sense, and it was also perfect. Today, After looking back, I I see my first decade of life where I was exploring. I was fully immersed in, in exploring the large view. It was the natural view. Then there were decades of trying to fit into the smaller view because everybody was telling me that what I was talking about was crazy. Well, now I'm I'm in the large view again, but I have a lot of empathy. I have a lot of compassion for those still in the small view. I feel this group intelligence is is like an ambassadorial aspect of me. An ambassador for source. An ambassador to help me return to God, to the creator, to, to the source of all. And this aspect of me, this angel aspect of me is reaching to me, me being the aspect of of that, of them, of that group consciousness. It's a blending of consciousness. It's an integration of more of who I am made manifest here. And now is the time for every one of us to recall from within our own superpowers and to blend with the more of who we truly are. We see what happens when we sleep. This planet needs us to be awake and in our fullness now. We have work to do. All of these messages are music to me, whether I speak or sing them. They have a harmonic meditative rhythm, and I encourage people to receive it through the heart. I'll leave you with this message from 2015. So while you may not have example 
and you fear that there is no way that humanity can survive and recreate itself without these orders in place. You are mistaken. There is a natural way of being in the heart consciousness with more of yourselves present. It is a natural way of being and it is based on love. You have been taught, you have been conditioned that love is weak. Now, if you were taught of the true power of love and embodying this love that is who you are, your universal identity, then you would completely disrupt what was in place to control. All right? We do not wish to dwell on what occurred in the past. It is important that it is acknowledged and integrated. Now it is time to integrate your natural state. This does not come with the explanations that the mind and the intellect demand. It is an expansion into more, the memory of more, the identification of more, and then you practice this power on earth. Support each other in this in-between feeling stage. Understand that it is not going to make sense. Let go of the need for it to make sense in terms of your past. You are letting go of the past. You are letting go of the limitations. You are letting go of your constant adaptation to smallness. The reversal has occurred. At the very least, be willing to turn in the direction of your expansion. To trust that with the embodiment of more and more individuals embracing their soul and their natural state and acting on this with feet on earth, understand that it is a rapid momentum into this new way of being, this expanded way of being on Earth. What will it take for you to make that leap of faith? How many days, how many ways will it hesitate? I see your face through time and space and I, I want to taste. I lick the flame, I will untame. I show you the Turn it inside